Just a few weeks back, I did a video on the death of the Fun2 Linux project. All good things must come to an end. Now for full context, be sure to go check out that prior video. As a TLDR though, this wasn't just any old Gen2 based distro. This was a Gen2 based distro made by the creator of Gen2, who not long after the project first began, left the project and then came back to Gen2, but wasn't really happy with the state of the project at the time, the people involved, and the general vibes of Gen 2. He felt like it was a fairly toxic and unfun environment, and just didn't really want to be involved with it, but still wanted to work on the Gen 2 technology, things like Emerge and all of this other fun stuff, but wanted to have a fun community built around it instead. This led to Fun2 Linux. And Fun2 Linux had been going on for quite a while now, so likely after quite a bit of thought and lots of consideration, the plan has actually changed. Fun2 is no longer going to completely die. Instead, Fun2 continues in hobby mode. I've decided to keep Fun2 Linux going in a limited capacity. Borrowing a phrase from Cameron Kaiser, developer of 104 Fox, a Firefox fork for PowerPC Max, I never knew about this project until I read the post, Fun2 Linux will be entering hobby mode. And I don't understand why, but in Linux Yak, this is snarkily referred to as coma mode rather than hobby mode. Given these circumstances, uncertainty about the project's future, and the owner's unpredictable moves, it's challenging to see who would rely on Fun2 from here on out. But whether we like it or not, these things are part of the open source world. Now here's the thing, here's the fun thing about a project that says it's in hobby mode. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be relying on it, because it's not being run as a professional distro, it's being run for fun as a hobby. But let's go back to the post that actually matters. Fun2 Linux will continue as a personal project of mine maintained for myself. You will still be able to ego sync and get periodic updates. You can still use it if you want to. I use Fun2 in various capacities personally, so I might as well allow others to continue to use it if they want. Again, you shouldn't be expecting anything out of this project if you continue to use it. This project is a hobby. It will be updated whenever Daniel feels like it needs to be updated. If you care about the absolute latest software, the latest security patches, the latest anything, you are looking in the wrong place now. That is not what the project is any longer. If you know what you're doing, if you know how to maintain things yourself, if you want to get involved with something that's just really casual and kind of just there, again, to just have fun, as the name would suggest, as the hobby would suggest, maybe this is something you still want to be involved in. Community development resources, bug tracker and community code repositories will remain offline. As he is running this for himself, he doesn't really need any sort of public system for people to get involved with it. For his own sanity, I would expect him to still have code repositories around and probably some sort of even less formal bug tracking system, just something to keep track of things going on. But you don't need to see it. Forums and wiki will be moved to read-only mode. The forum has already gone read-only as of the recording of this. Fun2 logins will go away at some point. Discord will continue to be used to some degree, but please move all community discussion to Reddit for self-support, not Discord. That's where you can ask other Fun2 Linux users for help going forward. So the Discord is turning into more of a community discussion zone, hangout sort of thing, as opposed to the place you go where, hey, I have an issue with this package. Hey, this isn't compiling properly. That sort of stuff should be sent to the Reddit, which I looked at the Reddit and um, not many people use it. So especially now that it's a hobby project, if you're not the sort of person who knows how to deal with these problems yourself, find something else. If you like to keep a fun to container, 
please contact me at this email address and I'll make arrangements to keep yours going. These were previously going away at the end of this month. I'll keep sufficient infrastructure online to maintain some container hosting. So I don't know why more distros don't offer this as a product, but fun two containers are basically offering some of the distro infrastructure that wasn't being used by the distros, just additional things they had, and then allowing people to rent out that space and just use it as any old server. This is basically the model that created AWS. Obviously, this system is not the cheapest way to get a server. If you want that, go to one of the big server providers. But this is a way to support the distro in a way that gives you something directly in return. And considering it's a hobby, I would have expected this to only apply to existing containers. If you want a new fun to container, contact me to get on a waiting list for some new infrastructure I am working on. Funds will be used to support Oleg to work on these future projects that will be available to the public at some point. If you care about the fate of Fun2 and community open source projects and Oleg, this is a great way to demonstrate support. To me, this sounds like you shouldn't expect anything. Hopefully down the line it happens. Maybe down the line it happens. And if it's something that can wait, hey, give it a shot. But if you need server infrastructure, today, tomorrow. Again, going to one of the bigger providers is your best bet there. If you're interested in making a major, meaningful, technical contribution to Fun2 Linux, please contact me privately via email to discuss it. I'm always open to co-creation and supporting collaboration from serious contributors, but can't spend the time and energy to keep the doors open for this 24-7 as there is significant overhead in running a community project. This is something that I think a lot of people just don't really consider when doing something in the FOSS world. If you're dealing with a community project and you have bug triaging and tagging and testing and marking things as good for new contributors, good for medium level contributors, doing all of these little things that a lot of people expect to be there if you have an open source project at a bare minimum, actually doing bug triaging and working out what bugs are important, all of this takes additional time and take away from the things that you actually want to be working on. And on a small project, maybe it's not that much time, but if you're just doing this for fun, it might be more time than you're willing to spend on it, and you just don't want to be bogged down in the nonsense of just having to deal with other people. Even though things in the FOSS world look like they are free, they are monetarily free, they're not free when it comes to time, and a lot of time is spent just making sure things keep on turning. The latest changes from Harvester 2024-07 have just been merged into official Fun2, and the tree was updated today with continued periodic updates to follow about once a week or so. And the most important thing, the final thing, my YouTube channel may receive some content in the relatively near future, so if you are interested in following future developments or getting more detail on my views of open source software, please follow me there. Now, at least up until this point, he hadn't very frequently posted here, but there is, um, this video. <laughs> <laughs> growing some weed in my front yard. So if you want to hear the creative gen to talk about that, um, I, I go follow his channel. It only has 1.2k subs. Give it some attention. Now, I'll probably reach out to Daniel myself, but I know you saw the prior video on Fun2, so if you happen to see this one as well, and you're up for a discussion, I would absolutely love to have you on the podcast to talk about the early history of Gen 2, why you made Gen 2, what like the history of the Linux landscape was like at the time. Like, why did people gravitate towards Gen 2? What was it doing that nobody else did? What was it doing better that made it such a popular distro at the time? And of course, you know, how fun to has been, why you have the Wolfpack philosophy, all of these other little things that I think would make a really good discussion. If you don't see this, you'll probably get an email. And one last thing I want to mention is I don't know why people feel the need to do this, but after the announcement came out, this was posted to the forum. Too late, I've migrated to other distro. I won't install fun to again. Uh... Okay, it's a hobby project. 
it's not expected that other people are going to use it. Good for you, I guess. I You didn't need to announce that you were leaving, though. But let me know. What do you think about a project going into this hobby mode state? Do you think it's better to just kill off the project and do something new? Or do you think it is perfectly fine to just keep something around and work on it for fun? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I will have fun too.